Hi, this is Alexia Tsotsis with uh, TechCrunch TV, and I'm here with the founder of Search Engine Land, Danny Sullivan. And Danny is at, at uh, South by Southwest because he's going to moderate a panel. And the panel is? It is the uh, aptly Twitterable name of Q&A with Google and Bing on website ranking. And uh, I mean, another name for this would be like Google versus Bing Smackdown. <laughs> um, there'll probably be some elements of that. I'm, I will try to bring that in with some moderation skills. Um, so this, this panel is meant to or encapsulate some of the search engine wars that have been going on, uh, sparked by a Vivek Wadha article, right? Do you? Yeah, there's, I mean, the, it's primarily for people here at South By who are listed on Google or Bing and trying to understand why am I not doing well, why am I doing well, and get, and get some answers directly. We have both uh, Google's Matt Katz and Dwayne Forrester from Bing who will be answering questions. But part of that does flow into the whole thing of this thing that came up over January and so on about, well, is Google's results just full of spam? Can you not get to some of the good stuff? Which impacts on whether or not if you are writing the good stuff, how do you get it found? Well, what do you think? Is our Google search results full of spam? I think that they're probably noisier than they were in the past. Um, I think people have short memories and don't really recall what it was like to have spam-filled search results. And I think that it's not so much a spam problem as much as it is um, that you have a lot more low quality content. That It's not necessarily spam, but it's kind of purporting to answer a question and it kind of gives you the answer and it's, it's fast food-ish when you actually more would rather have a dinner. And of course, that's what Google recently has been acting out against to try to prevent from getting out there. Yes, Google's taking uh, incremental steps into into providing like customized results in a sense. Like it took a it took a step where you could report results as spam. Well, there was an experiment, right. and then finally last week it decided to block to let you block personal sites. Can you talk a little bit more about yeah. what happened? So we, um, you know, Google's allowed you to report spam for a long period of time, but they didn't necessarily get rid of that stuff right away. Um, they would say, we like to we use the algorithms, we'd like to do it over time to get rid of stuff in a more strategic manner. Uh, then we had Blacko come along and say, all right, we're going to wipe out the top 20 spam sites, most reported spam sites from our search engine, we're going to do it. So then Google comes back and says, all right, we're going to release an extension for Chrome, you can install this, and if you're using it, you see a site you don't like, you can mark it as spam and you won't see that site again. So. So last week, Blacko comes along and says, well, now we've banned 1.1 million domains. Yeah, Blacko's just going to keep upping right. the ante. They're, well, they're that was the, the, the joke home. over at Google. They have a, well, whatever you do, we will add one number to it type <laughs> of thing. Uh, but literally, then the next day, Google announced, all right, we now have a tool within Google Search itself where when you are searching, if you see a site you do not like, you can click and block it, and you will never see pages from that site again. We'll, we'll remind you that you know, you've, you've blocked it, and you'll have some indications it's not there, but you can wipe it out. Now, they've actually been working on this for, for months. It wasn't something they just whipped up overnight to go back at Pleco, but, it, mm -hmm. but it's nice for people who, you know, if you feel like, I just don't want that kind of content, now you have that control. You can keep it out. But, I mean, don't you think that this, like, let's say somebody blocks the New York Times right. out, of, out of spite. Maybe they write an article saying that everybody just aggregates their content and it's just so annoying you decide to block it. But that would never happen, <laughs> but let's say they do something like that. Yes, that would never happen. No, no. <laughs> so somebody blocks the New York Times. Right. Right? Exactly. Um, do you think that's limiting options for users? Do you think that, that it's a net positive to be able to custom tailor your search results and sensor sites? So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a concern that if you're only looking at stuff that you want to see, that maybe you're not getting diversity or a variety of results. So if you're never going to see results from the New York Times, you're not going to learn anything. Maybe Google shouldn't allow you to do that. Um, and I understand that, but I think that for a lot of searches, 
that's probably not going to be how it happens. I don't think it'll be that you're going to block the New York Times. It's that you just may block a site that you're consistently encountering on searches that is not giving you satisfactory answers. I, you know, maybe down the line we'll see, you know, Republicans all blocking Democrat sites and Democrats all blocking Republican sites. But the reality is I think a lot of people, will, even when they have opposing political views, understand that at times I need to do searches and find information from across the web. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that aspect of it. What I, what I find kind of problematic is that these things are just, as long as Google's algorithms allow for SEO, black hat SEO or gaming right. SEO, these, these companies like content farms like eHow will keep or others. Right. <laughs> you said it, not or, me. But or yeah. others. <laughs> or certain aggregators will keep popping up. I mean, I, I find this I find it problematic that their business model relies upon Google's like inability to block all spam forever. Right. So it's interesting because um, part of what kicked off this whole fight of Google's results suck was Stack Overflow, now Stack Exchange, saying, "Hey." We do all this great stuff, and we get more than 90% of our traffic overall from Google, and they need to fix things because now people can't find our good stuff. Well, that's a business that's built on Google. But nobody said, you know what? You guys built your business around Google, so you're black hatty, SEO-y, whatever, whatever, even though it's, a, it's an SEO play. If your traffic is coming and so much of it comes straight from Google. So then I think it's, it's difficult when you look at something like an e-how or the demand media properties to say, well, they just shouldn't be there because they're content farms. I think some of the difference is they, uh, a lot of the content farms, and, and I don't mean that with a negative tone, I mean it as somebody who has looked closely at how people are searching and trying to create content to satisfy that. That's my definition of it. That I think a number of those um, have provided these answers out there that uh, some, some of them are good answers. But, but it, I think it's easy to kind of be knee-jerk against them because you think you only exist because you decide to get the search traffic, as opposed to, let's say, the New York Times, which didn't create itself because it was going after search traffic, may not report things just because a lot of people on Google Trends are searching for it. They just decide we should be covering this sort of stuff, and maybe they even create a trend by doing it. And somehow I think that can feel purer the, the, the reality is I think the truth is somewhere in between. I agree, I think, why do you think people tend to give uh, more grief to demand and not Stack Overflow? Stack Overflow is like the darling of our industry. Right. We never say, oh, you're gaming SEO. Because I think the Stack Overflow, first of all, didn't go out and create questions looking at what people were searching for. They had a community that was asking questions organically because they had these kinds of questions in their mind. And then, uh, you know, apparently, and I haven't spent much time on this hype, but I've heard from others that there's good, high quality answers that you get there. If you look at eHow, they're studying what people are searching for. They're not necessarily a group of experts. They're just a group of writers who then say, okay, let's write to what's happening. Although, you know, I have to say, like Blecko, at our SMX conference last week, they were saying, see, they're not written by experts. You want answers from doctors. And I was saying, well, yes, but if I read the New York Times, the stuff that I read and I trust or, or don't trust, depending on what you're reading, but a lot of what's read, that's not written by experts. It's written by knowledgeable writers who can also create a good story and you trust them as well. So that's not even necessarily the answer to it. But I, I think it is that the division is that the, the content farms, I think, are seen as just somehow leeching on Google, not necessarily contributing quality content back. So it's not, they're not adding value, whereas yes. Stack Overflow is adding value. One last question. Sure. Is Bing even a contender in the wars? Oh, yeah. In fact, Bing, both Hitwise and Comscore, showed that last month Bing gained about a point of share, and they gained that point from what looks like the expense of Google. It, normally they, they gain, and it's like Yahoo the dips, but I went and looked at both of those numbers on the flight out, and it was Google that had gone down a little bit. So, I mean, Google's still 60%, and Bing's still like down there in like the 12 or the 15 or whatever. The, what I didn't get a chance to look at is whether or not the overall numbers have gone up, because sometimes Google can lose share, but the search volume's gone up, and maybe Bing has built it in ways that we might not agree with. I was at MSN yesterday, and one of the headline articles on MSN was search colon some topic, uh, you know, and it was like inspiring people there to go off and do searches. <laughs> well, okay. I don't know if that was a great story, That's ridiculous. but it was certainly going to generate some searches for Bing. <laughs>
But they are a contender. Um, they, I think they are growing in awareness. They are certainly keeping Google on its toes, which is great. And even you'll get people on Google say, it's nice to have the competition to keep us going. So it, it's nice to kind of have a little search war stuff happening out there. Thank you, Danny. Thanks.